Horse. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Midas Letter. And uh, a very raw day it is here. Lots going on, lots not going on. Yeah. S&P up 36. Big whoop there. Yeah. Why big, is that it? Well, you know what? I think he had an interesting comment. Interest rates, are the long, all the bonds are see, seem to be uh, in, uh, yielding more. Yeah. So everybody thinks, well, if the if bonds are yielding more, things can't be so bad. If things can't be so bad, it's got to be good for the stock market. But then you were saying also that uh, pessimism is so rampant throughout the sentiment meter that um, nobody's <laughs> doing anything. Everybody's, uh, yeah, yeah. They figured meltdowns the don't occur in. from over. Over like uh, uh, when you're when things are negative, hmm. usually it's when things are positive. That's when you get stung. Stinkers. Yeah. Stuckered. S stink eye. Stink eye. Stuck died. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. So here we are. Monday. We are. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, Ed. Yeah. Um, anything? Well, how about that Cantrest news? What was the news? You didn't read it. I I watch it every day. Today was the first day I didn't read it. What did they say? Uh, they received notice from the uh, Ontario Cannabis Store uh, that the Ontario Cannabis Store was going to send back all of their CanTrust products because they're from uh, an unlicensed source. Yeah, it'd be like if I grew some at home and walked into the store and said, hey, sell some of this for me. Yeah. Well, exactly. don't tell anybody. Sell some homegrown for me. Wow. So anyway, it's just another... Uh, yeah, the, the, and all this pot's got to go bad at some... Doesn't it... There's a shelf life to this stuff, isn't there? Well, I don't know. It depends who you ask. I mean, for me, uh, right, good right. cannabis, good cannabis, well preserved in a nice, uh, you know, canister that you open up sealed? an hour a day. No, you don't want it to be sealed. You want to open it up every day and give it a breath, breath of fresh air. You want to keep it at 62 to 66 percent moisture, so they have both. So you wouldn't breathe on it if you wanted to give it a breath of fresh air, because your breath would probably kill the plant. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> This plant has been dead for a while. It's been dried. It's my, been cured my, properly. My breath. My breath. Not yours. Right. Okay. Um, anyways. Uh, yeah. It's a, uh, you know, last couple of weeks of August. Market's obviously going quiet. This week. I know. Jackson's Hole. That's where they had the big. Uh, That's where all the assholes go. <laughs> Jackson's Hole. Jackson. The biggest Jackson, hole. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that's quite the uh, spot, apparently. Yeah. So the all the Fed governors gather for a bunch of, uh, you know, I don't know. Felicio, Do they have to bring their own lunch? Little fluffing, uh, you know, they basically uh, come up with, okay, how are we going to explain this week's, this next year's bullshit? How do we, uh, how do we yeah. make that fly by the uh, investing public? How do we make that fly? How do we make it sound like we're actually not taking marching orders from the duck in the White House? Uh, interesting news piece today, Donald Trump is quoted as saying, there's zero risk of a recession. You don't need to worry, but it's the Fed's fault if there is one. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if they ever come out at the beginning of these things and say, you know what, we've kicked the can down the road this far. Has anybody got any great ideas on how we can kick it down a little further? Right. Because that's all that's being done here. Right. Well, and but really, what's what we're waiting for, I mean, you see gold yearning to the upside, still holding strong at 1500 oh, oh, Anything over 1500 is very bullish. And you've still got, uh, you know, I think I saw the 30-year at 2.09 in the... Uh, the two-year at a buck seventy-seven. That's not much of a spread. The risk of inversion is high, I think. Well, the ten-year rate, I, I believe, is below the two-year rate. Still. Well, that no, that, that was not the case when I last looked. Okay. Okay. Well, because the uh, manipulative forces of the United States federal system, sure, financial system, took made sure that that was not long-lasting because that would be a certain trigger for a recession sell, sell imminent. Off. Yeah. But anyways, um, regardless of what the presidents and the Fed governors and the economists say, um, we would like to let you know that there is, in fact, a recession imminent. And the trigger for this recession, I think, will be mm, that the Deutsche Bank is unable to recapitalize uh, its loan book on a given day. This is exactly, if you look what's happening with Deutsche Bank right now, you look at their chart and you juxtapose it against Lehman Brothers chart in uh, 2008, you're basically looking at a replica. And here's the thing, Deutsche Bank's a bigger bank well, well, than well, Lehman it, Brothers it, it was. It used to be. And Hank Polson said, we're not going to bail out uh, 
Lehman Brothers because uh, Lehman Brothers is not a systemically important bank, i.e. too big to fail. But then what happened? I Lehman Brothers failed and we the entire credit system collapsed. I got a, a Deutsche Bank chart up for three months. What do you What do you got there? Let's have a look. And you know what? I want to point out a couple things because you got your NDI on. Oh yeah. And no, maybe I. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> We're not looking at this chart today. Well, no charts. No charts. This is a chart-free day in there. I hear you guys having a good old time in there. Hello. Ah, oh, there we go. So look, look at the three. Look at those three red candles here, all outside the band. Yeah. Look, look at all outside. So the one. What is uh, this? Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank. Do Deutsche Bank. So now, typically, this looks like Deutsche Bank is a buy. Well, and then, well, except today's band, and it's bouncing no, back. No, no, it, it bounced, and here it is up a little bit. It's at, but that's a star. Uh, it's at 704. This thing's only capped now at about. Do you know why it bounced today? Well, probably because bonds probably went up. Like uh, negative interest rates, which is across the yield curve in Germany, is bad for Germany, bad for the banks, and that's why uh, when when they go up a bit, the people jump into stocks, thinking it's no kidding. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, yeah. You, so the uh, European Central Bank governor, Ali, uh, what's his name? Anyways, Ollie said that uh, he figures that uh, Ollie Wren. Ollie Wren raised the possibility of buying equities as a means of stimulus this morning in Germany. That's why Deutsche Bank spiked today. Because they're buying the stock. No, they're not. He speculated that they might consider buying stocks as a way of stimulating the economy. He did, however, announce a $50 billion fiscal stimulus package. So this is why Deutsche Bank has bounced. Now, 50 billion euros, not dollars, sorry. 50 billion is not a hell of a lot, and so it'll be interesting to see exactly uh, how it, far You know, to your them. point earlier, they're running out of uh, arrows, right? Yeah. They've got, they've got the arrows. The quiver is bare. The quiver is bare. The now what do we do? Now what do we do? I think, you know, I think that the possibility exists that they start printing money, uh, you know, like shock and awe style. So instead of saying yeah. seven hundred billion dollars, that's what they started with in the uh, well actually, you know, I was I was I was reading over the um, the timeline of the financial crisis in two thousand and eight. And long before they got around to announcing the troubled asset relief program, I was mistakenly calling it the toxic asset relief program. It was the troubled asset relief program. Uh, in September or seven hundred billion dollars they were kiting checks back and forth. Remember they bought $40, $40 billion worth of AIG preferred stock? There was a lot of things that they did. Yeah. That, you know, they thought this is the most we're going to have to do. And they kept the, the, so Hank Paulson was the head of the Treasury at the time. Ben Bernanke was the head of the Fed. And between them, they kept underestimating the magnitude which the problem of an absence of confidence in credit markets would actually in part on stock markets, bond markets, and the world at large. And so would it not be a surprising, would it be a surprise if they had the same sort of false sense of security now that they did then? Look, it, it, history, if it doesn't repeat itself, it certainly rhymes, right? Like, oh, Yogi like, Berra. Like, like, yeah, like they were always wrong. I mean, they were just gonna, they were about to raise rates aggressively back in the fall. And remember what? And then it's a, then all of a sudden, oh wait a minute, yeah, something's right. wrong. Right. There's some signs out there that that the economy is not growing, and so <laughs> I, you know, not growing. Yeah, like 1.2 percent. Well, Ger Germany's you know the they're, they're really nervous about what's going on in Germany. Well, who wouldn't be? I mean, why wouldn't you be? I mean, Jesus. you can only drive so many Porsches. And how? What do you think is going to happen when Brexit happens with no a no Brexit deal? You've got Jerry Corbyn already sort of manipulating, maneuvering yeah. to become the, he's like, well, why, let's just make me premier. Boris isn't going to do shit. Boris can't do shit. Boris knows nothing. So, so uh, I thought, isn't Boris already the prime minister of England? Yeah, but I, is, he, is he still? I don't know. I thought maybe he'd been thrown out already because it's been a weekend. Okay. And you know how politics is in the UK. 
As soon as you join the ranks of the governing party, you've got a bit of a target on your back, don't you, mate? And, um, you know, everybody's aiming at it with the dull, blunt, sharp instruments. It doesn't matter. Bullets, cannon. But, yeah, so, uh, but Boris, Boris doesn't have a plan. Boris says today, in the, I think it was The Guardian, Boris says that he's sure the ECB will come around and uh, extend you know, some kind of offer to Britain because it's within their interest to see that Britain doesn't leave without a deal. Now, I just thought we should remind Boris that uh, then, why the fuck did you leave the Eurozone and what makes you think they're gonna throw you a lifeline when you just threw the biggest kink into the whole experiment yeah. since its inception? Like, good God, new Boris, you're insane. Like, they're not going to throw you a lifeline. Well, they might throw you a lifeline, but there'll be a giant cement block on the other end. They want you to go down. They want you to fail. They want, us, they want you to understand that you cannot survive without the Eurozone. That's the only way this works. See, it's amazing to me that a guy swimming, drowning in the deep end of a pool, and it could be thinking, oh, this is... I don't think I'm doing so well, but to really see the fact that he's going to drown and that a giant alligator is going to come and eat him, right. he can't see that. He's in the midst of it. No, that's the guy right. standing on the edge, he can see. So this is the great thing about being in Canada. We're standing on the edge of these mutual cesspools, basically the United States economy, the European economy, uh, and it's like, oh my gosh, look what's happening. These things are going down. We're buying gold, or at least we're trying to accept another note that uh, the quoted price of gold is not actually a price you will be able to buy any gold for. The actual price of gold you can buy gold for is at least five to seven percent higher, at least. And I, call, I called up I called up the sales desk of one bullion company. They said, "Oh yeah, we'll sell you a hundred ounce bar of silver for twenty four seventy." And I called up the sales desk or the buy desk rather. They said, "Oh, we'll give you twenty one thirty one for that." So it's like the same companies putting. You know, a big markup on, and it's like, well, so this is probably one of the reasons why gold and silver are not really able to catch a strong wave of retail buying interest is because it's too hard to buy. You call up a gold company and it shows you a gold price that's 7, 8, 10, 12 percent in some cases higher than the quoted price in the market. And the guy says, well, why would I buy gold? I'm getting ripped off. I can't find anybody who won't rip me off. News for you, it is the people quoting the gold price on the ticker that are ripping you off. It's false. It does not exist. Yeah. And so this is yet again another method by which the price of gold and its perceived value is manipulated by the CFTC, by all of the participants in the gold spot process, and by all of the entities that subsequently, innocently or otherwise, quote a price of gold and silver that uh, which nobody can actually buy it. And so this is like, it's just like, wow, it's amazing to me. It's like 1984. We're going to raise the, uh, the, the allocation of chocolate from, uh, from, from 22 grams to 21 grams, and we think you should celebrate. It's like, oh, great, you're raising the allocation of chocolate to 21 grams for 22 grams. It's the same thing with the whole gold-silver thing. It's just fucking bullshit. I don't well, know how anybody can participate. It, it, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. There's the most profound you, you statement know what? of well, the We day. should have a show and call it, it's all bullshit. Well, let's just call this show that. It's all bullshit. But then that's what would we be saying? we just look at a chart and say, ah, oh, that's all bullshit. we look at a gold chart, ah, oh, that's all bullshit. we look at the bond chart, that's definitely bullshit. Yeah. Like, what isn't bullshit? Well, I mean, what financial Gravity. Class? Yeah, but you can't invest in gravity. Well, there you go. Oh. See? That's bullshit, Ed. That's bullshit. <laughs> More Here's bullshit. some news. How about some news? Halo Labs announced today a collaboration with Elo Vapor to launch Lavada. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Lavada, a unique measured dose of CBD, uh, an alternative wellness focused on utilizing dab tabs. This an alternative wellness brand focused on utilizing dab tabs technology to create a unique measured dose CBD consumption solution. Boy, who wrote that press release? Um, Levada CBD dosables are infused with precise percentages of CBD and botanically derived terpenes, allowing consumers to accurately control and measure their CBD consumption. Okay, that's great. Dixie Brands announced that its Accesso hemp subsidiary has signed a distribution agreement with Power Distribution. 
Aurora Cannabis completed a previously announced plan of arrangement with Hempco Food and Fiber. Can Trust, well, we already went through that. They're sending, getting their cannabis sent back to them from the Ontario Cannabis Store. Oxley has entered into a 300-acre hemp cultivation and purchase agreement. Uh, MedMen announced a launch of a statewide delivery service in California. True Leaf Brand submitted a site evidence package to Health Canada for True Leaf Campus in Lumbee, British Columbia. And Valens Growworks is qualified to trade on the QTQX. There's your news. Um, fascinating shit, Ed. Fascinating. Uh, yeah. So let's take a look at the cannabis indices. First, let's make sure I'm on the right network, which I'm not. Then let's make sure my NDI is up, which it isn't. And uh, yeah, well, I'm going to get those uh, go. indices up there. You're going to get those get those indexes up, will you, Ed? They're down horribly. Are they down again today? No, nope, they're up. The Midas Letter Cannabis Large Cap Index on my uh, screen is uh, mine's down two percent. Is up. There we go. The Midas Letter Canadian Cannabis Index is uh, just flirting up with underneath 8,000 at 7,925. The Midas Letter Small Cap Index is up 4.28%. Yeah. That's far more up wait, than it wait, was You this know morning. what? I, I hate to tell you this, but I think that's from Friday. August 16th. What the hell is going on here? See, I've got August 19th. I'd like to deal with oh, it. Oh, no like wonder. That was a screen from last Friday. Uh-huh. So the Midas Letter Large Cap Index is down 2.07%. Thank you. 77.60. Right. The Small Cap Index is down 0.7% to 1266. Thank you. The Venture Index down 0.42 and the CSE Index down 1.28%. Let's take a look at what's going on, going on. Oh, look at canopy growth down at 3.66%. So that's kind of kind of troubling. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I got to tell you, like. Uh, so is it the, yeah. the is missing the revenue target that much of a of a discount event for? Yeah, and you know, the less there's certainly less cash around the company every quarter. So I mean, they got lots of cash, obviously. Uh, wow. Look at True Leaves down 7% so to 1131. Nine names on the list, and one of them's up. Afri is up 12 cents. Wow, and that barely qualifies. It that barely, barely qualifies as a lift. Yeah. All yeah, right. I, I, I mean, look, and, and I, I went in, and Tilray got down to the, uh, within a, a snick of the low for the year today. A snick? A snick. Mm. Like a snick. You know what I've been noticing is that there are uh, there's a lot of news on the news wires that is uh, like companies I've never heard of, never heard of. Three fourteen Pure Cannabis Limited. You ever heard of them? Nope. Alberta-based cannabis producer received a culti cultivation license for a hydroponic facility. You know, if that was a press release in 2016, I might be impressed. But in 2019, it's like really. People are still announcing that they've got a, a cultivation license. You better be announcing a lot of financing along with that. 42,500 square feet building on 16 acres of lands with uh, expansion possibilities for another 270,000 square feet. The facility was de designed to EU GMP standards. Hmm. 314pure.com is the uh, URL. And... Uh, yeah, well, I wonder just, why 314. What's the significance of that number? Six minutes before 320, which is one hour before 420. There you go. Yeah, three degrees of separation. So there's just one case in point. A brand new company, obviously not public because they don't have a trading symbol associated. Um, let's see. Invent Health presents dispenser for medical cannabis, mer medical marijuana, and opioids. Now this sounds interesting. Invent help. I want to help to prevent overdoses of medical marijuana and opioid prescriptions, especially by children and people with Alzheimer's and dementia, says the inventor from Colorado Springs, California. For this reason, I came up with a secure dispenser that delivers joints, edibles, and prescription pills at preset times, which are prescribed by a doctor. Now, I don't know about you, Ed, but I'm pretty sure that the people who overdose on Alzheimer's and from de and with dementia, 
think they might be wanting to overdose and wrap it up. Let's call it a day. Let's drive on. Things are not well, getting better. Things cannot get better. They if you, if you, you have, I, I've had some experience with Alzheimer's. Uh, <laughs> and you got cured? You're What'd better you, now? What did you say? What's my name? What? Who? Where am I? No, no, Wait, but, but if, you, if, okay, if you can't, if you don't have a memory, hmm. can you be depressed? I, yeah. How? Well, I'm, you, let's I'm say, sad because I can't remember anything. <laughs> no, but what are you sad about? That I can't remember anything. But you wouldn't remember that. Well, but I'm thinking it in real time because I can't remember anything. I always thought if you couldn't, if you, if you, if you had a, something that bothered you about your past and you thought, stopped thinking about it, you'd feel better. Uh, well, yeah, you mean like a bad memory. A bad memory, yeah. yeah but, uh, uh, bad memory? Great, stop. get rid of those, but can you get, get rid of the bad ones and keep the good ones? Eh. Yeah, that's just I don't it. Know. So I that's know. why I would be depressed. If I had no memory, I'd be depressed. Super depressed. Oh my gosh, there I am saying it again. Yeah. Us watching you, watching us, watching you. Um, what else happens? What else is going to happen? Like, what is, what is going to come out of the Jackson Hole thing? Well... I'm I'm really curious about what's going on in. in, in have you seen now that the of the the the, uh, the protesters in in Hong Kong are now doing a peaceful uh, protest, and uh, it's going a lot of people coming out. What's going to happen there, James? Well, I think the Chinese are going to shoot everybody dead in due course. Well, then I mean, the, that's what they did at Tiananmen Square. The, their right? economy will go down a bit. You think the economy will go down a bit? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I've, n I've, never, I've never been to China. I'm kind of afraid to go because it's like they decide you're edited out of the gene pool. Just like that, you disappear. Uh, yeah. So I don't know how anybody could live there. I don't, know how, I don't know how the nation of so many people let such a small group of essentially criminals run their country. Like, really, I don't, I don't get it. Like, criminal, talk about a criminal regime. Um, well, North Korea... Russia, Saudi Arabia, like Philippines. Yeah, I would. I, my my advice to you is don't go to any of those countries that you just mentioned because yeah. you your picture now is being flashed all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Tenement well, Square. Well, Have you seen this man? Shoot him! Yeah, if you do. I, Everybody's you know allowed to shoot him. You know what? If, if there's a book out there about the the hundred greatest despots of all time, and they're all political political leaders. Mm -hmm. You know. They, who else has the power to, to do the stupid Snuff things? Snuff out lives indiscriminately? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, that's why uh, revolutions were made. And, and, and once you're in, and if you think about what's going to happen to you, if, if there is a coup or a uh, coup d'etat or... A coup d'etat! So you say, well, what are... He's what are I, at me, you bastard. You're, you're, I'll give you a coup d'etat. Look, 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 right look what happened to Gaddafi. <laughs> look what happened to Gaddafi. Saddam Hussein. Ultimately, they become pariah. And so their, their attitude is fight to the finish. Well, like, they become uh, targeted. I mean, despots target other despots. I know, but you know, the Shah got away, sort of. He, he was able. He died of cancer. He, he left, though. That nobody he? gave him on purpose that we know of. But he did. He, he, uh, he left. He split. He flew out of there. He, well, he was flown out by the Americans. Yeah. Who, you know, after years of him basically being the lackey of the Americans. Right, the, uh, right. Actually, one could argue that the extreme fundamentalism that took hold of Iran post Shah was a result of the fact that the Shah was in fact a uh, Hi, I'm the Shah of Iran. Yeah, how would I say America, Uncle Sam? Tell them that you sure. drop Islam or you're dead. Okay. Drop Islam or you're dead. That's my puppet show imitation. Uh, SPX at this time, 39.63, or up 39.91, up 1.28%. Is that, is that right? Yeah, what I want to know is why is the S&P up and our cannabis stocks are down? I thought they were correlated. I uh, thought it was like S&P up, they were cannabis stocks They were up. correlated. Okay. They were. Now they're not because our cannabis stocks are down like the large cap as low as 4.5%. Like what the hell? Anyways, and you also, here's, this, here's something I want to draw to your attention. Uh, I'll show you my uh, screen, but it won't make a lot of sense to most people because it's a jumbled mess of data. But uh, if you look here, the top trading stocks liquidity-wise on the uh, TSX uh, are no longer cannabis stocks. The top three stocks on the TSX Venture in terms of volume are no longer cannabis stocks. And yes, the top 
three stocks on the CSE are cannabis stocks, but that's all there is on the CSE. So of course it's going to be cannabis stocks. But there is a, there is a sign of the times. Mining yeah. is back in force on both the TSX Venture and the TSX. Uh, except for Bombardier holds the number one position, Canada's favorite welfare corporation that the government is constantly bailing out. Right. Um, you know, actually I'd point that out coming up to the, this October election that not only is Justin Trudeau a facilitator of Bombardier's serial bailout syndrome, which is where the taxpayers basically pay to keep this company functioning, uh, the, the Prime Minister, as we know last week, was found to be in violation of... Uh, conflict of interest rules. And uh, so uh, the New York Times, who's got this letter, this newsletter you can subscribe to about Canada, because you know Americans don't want to hear about Canada from Canadians. They want to hear about Canada from Americans. Anyways, New York Times uh, letter went out of their way to try to make it sound like, like Trudeau had a leg to stand on, uh, defending his insistence on pressuring at that point, Justice Minister Josie Raber Wilson into offering SNC Lavalin a deferred prosecution agreement on, as we remember, it was uh, economic grounds because the poor folks at SNC Lavalin would be out of a job if they didn't get a DPA. They need a DPA to keep in business. Well, SNC Lavalin's been laying off people like crazy, losing projects like crazy, reporting losses like crazy. So it doesn't need any help from the government to fuck up its own business. And uh, so really, should we be bailing out corporations like Bombardier and SNC Lavalin that have, in the case of Bombardier, a very uh, shareholder friendly structure that is in part underwritten by Canadian taxpayers. In the case of SNC Lavalin, we're actually got a government that's specifically trying to protect th this company from the legal process. And they're saying it's because of jobs. I don't buy it. And I don't think most Canadians should too. The election's coming up on August 20th. Let's not vote for Justin Trudeau because he is a crook. And let's not vote for... He's a crook. He's a crook. He's a criminal. Yeah. I mean, really. Yeah. He's trying to subjugate the rule of law for, uh, you know, you know when, political uh, means. When uh, Bill Mahar, I was watching him one night, he's so pro uh, left, not left wing, but Democrat, right? Okay. Uh, he was. He, he said, "Their woman went up to President Obama, who was president at the time, and started basically saying, you 'You're not doing this. You're not doing this.'" And he was appalled that some cons uh, elect uh, voter, voter, thank you, <laughs> could go up to the president and say those types of things. But I, when I listen to what he says about Trump, it's wild. You know, it seems that all this shit is all is biased, right? Everybody's got their favorite, and as long as you're not attacking my favorite, then you're okay. But as soon as you attack my favorite, then you're an asshole too. Well, I don't have a favorite anymore. I don't either. Justin Trudeau, I was pleased with Justin Trudeau because he brought in cannabis. Yeah. Now, which one of us in Canada who's participating in the cannabis industry is going to find fault with him for that? Nobody. So the question I had sure. to ask myself, am I being too harsh on him for trying to deprecate, you know, subordinate the rule of law in Canada to political interests? And does that outweigh his contribution to my net worth uh, thanks to legalizing cannabis? And I am reminded, A, that I didn't wait for him to legalize cannabis before I began participating in it. It was like I actually, because I was an early starter in the uh, cannabis sure. industry. and you knew a lot about it. Well, I consumed it, grew it, extracted it, smoked it, rolled it, twisted it, concentrated it, baked with it. You, I think you've covered it all there. Well, I bathed with it. I bathe my dogs in it. Anyways, yeah, so, um, yeah, no, I don't think so. I think, uh, I, think, uh, I think that the best thing that can happen in, the next, in this Canadian election is that um, the, the whole, all the parties get a few smattering of votes each, and they, it's essentially a coalition government. And nobody can get anything done, and nobody's got enough power to just arbitrarily, uniformly subordinate the rule of law in Canada for future generations. We've just got a bunch of you know, weak ducks up there who can't do anything until one of these parties manifests a real leader. I'll throw my full weight behind him, but show me a real leader. I think the Liberal Party should turf Justin, bring the ladies back. Let's give the girls a chance. Joe, Jody uh, Wilson-Raybould and uh, Jane Philpott, like she was instrumental in getting cannabis legalized. Let's give the girls a chance. Well, a name like Philpott, you'd think she would. Philpott. 
Yeah. Duh. Duh. I, I wonder if that's coincidental. What? That her name that is they Philpott? They said, well, we really want someone that's got pot in the name to, to deal with this. So let's, anybody, oh, here's a person, Philpot. Philpot. Okay. Fill her up, pot. Um, yeah, so all the cannabis news these days, like, I just can't get over it. Uh, how much there are new companies still coming to market, even after these three months of slow, like, I know. Nobody's made any money in Canada. Makes me nervous. Makes me think short. that, you know, there's people out there that are willing to start a business. You know, I mean, they just got to, you just can't raise the money in the sector like you used to. Well, this is it. I want to know how these guys are coming, coming to market. Well, maybe the, the bankers out there need a, need a commission. Well, there are a lot of, there are a lot of worthwhile companies coming to market. Probably um, more so now than before because there's going to be, they're going to be looked at with a little more discerning Mm -hmm. uh, uh, more of a discerning eye. Have you ever heard of uh, of Dr. Wolfgang Renz? No, I heard of a Have Wolfgang you ever heard of Pivot Robo. Pharma. No. Huh. Pivot Pharma is another deal that we've never heard of that trades on the CSC under the symbol PVOT. So, like, look, we got all these new, like, so let's, instead of focusing on our incumbents, because we did certainly give, uh, give our friend Cam Batley uh, plenty of podium last week. Plenty um, of podium? Plenty of podium. Is that alliteration? So there's a new one. Pivot Pharma. Let's take a look at that. PVOT. On what exchange? CSE. I want to see how some of these new ones are doing. What did it come out at? Oh, it's coming up as a broken link. Broken link. That's helpful. Oh yeah, that's, it's not trading right now. It's not? <laughs> so it must be, it must have just been, uh, this must be an RTO or something. Oh, really? Because in the last few days, I don't see any action. But I could be wrong. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. No. Anyway, Pivot Pharma, whatever, new company, Earthleaf. Spell Earthleaf. So, U-R-T-H-L-E-A-F. Earthleaf. Never heard of them. A private company not trading. So, we got, we got gold down a bit today. Not, not terribly down, but we got interest rates up a little bit, and yes. we got the stock market up. Yeah. I think every we should have a every and then the cannabis we should have a chart of the fourth those four categories and every day just check them off and see if any discernible trends can be. That's a good idea, boy. That almost sounds like you're a market participant. That's fascinating. Well, I've been I've been watching as a, as a since, since I was a broker. I've been watching gold, uh, the major indices in the states, and mm -hmm. the bond market now for approximately forty years. Wow. I know. So you must know a lot. No. You must be No, I don't know shit. <laughs> I, know, I know one thing. I know nothing, and How I do. How about this? How about we start with a brand new sector we've never looked at before? How about we talk to a guy yeah. who's telling me that there's a new sector in town that's going to make bazillionaires out of anybody who's lucky enough to get involved? Marijuana? No. Process, robotic process automation. Yeah. That Here's makes a sense. conversation I had with a guy who told me about that. His name's Mark Latimer. Mark Latimer joins me now. He is a specialist in robotic process automation. Mark, welcome. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate uh, it. Mark, my audience is focused on cannabis and uh, metals at this point, but tell me, what is robotic process automation? Sure. So robotic process automation, or RPA as the industry calls it, is a, um, it's software to automate robotic work processes. So anything that's high volume, mundane, repetitive, uh, you can think of kind of a boring job, those jobs in the future aren't going to exist. So what that means is people are going to need to learn new skills to remain valuable at the companies they work at. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an exciting time. There's a lot happening. So essentially you're replacing humans with machines. Um, essentially that's the way it looks, but um, it's actually creating a lot of net new jobs that didn't exist in the past. Oh, okay. So if we look back to when the internet was first introduced, there were a lot of people doing things that those jobs didn't exist. Uh, web designer, web developer, these types of programmers. Mm. So uh, automation essentially is going to create a lot of new developer jobs. So people working on building these robots, customizing them. And we're not talking about robots in, uh, in warehouses. These that you'd see on TV. This like is, it's, 
assembly lines. Right. So that's obviously been uh, been a big growing industry. But these, the robots now are more invisible robots, in the sense that they're just software and they're very flexible. So they can integrate to all types of accounting applications. And the the biggest job shift is going to be in banking. Um, areas of accounting and finance, we're seeing a lot of activity. Um, it's been UiPath, this company that we'll be talking a bit about, uh, they recently raised the Series D round of $568 million and are being backed by Sequoia Capital G and another, a number of companies that um, have kind of picked the winner. Hmm. And UiPath is Canadian? No, they're, uh, they're based out of Romania Oh, okay. uh, with now offices all over the world. They're hmm. seeing a lot of work. Um, in the U.S., probably a third of the revenue comes from the U.S., uh, Europe, and Japan. Hmm. They're doing quite well there because Japanese are so famous for robots. Right. So when it comes to software, they're quick adopters. Right. Um, okay, so they raised $568 million. So this is not a small business. This is a large global industry that is going to replace a lot of the service providers that have the software as a service business? Uh, not so much. Those... The service providers are actually going to benefit because part of integrating the, the robot out of the box simply won't automate work. You need to work with a service provider to customize the robot for the application. Mm. So there is a, a ton of service uh, jobs being created as a result. Um, mm, does that answer your cool. question? Yeah. So then. Uh, What's the, what's, is this like a whole emerging industry? Like, okay, so UiPath raised $568 million. Is that because they're the only ones doing this? Or is this something that is happening broadly and inserting itself into the administrative layer of large corporations? It's, um, UiPath is just one of a number of companies. The top, uh, Gartner recently came out with their, you know, famous magic, magic quadrant. Right. And UiPath is positioned as the leader. Uh, right behind them is Automation Anywhere, which is another company to look out for. Uh, and Blue Prism, who's been the leader in the past, and they've kind of taken a back seat. Um, there's about 17 companies that they recognized on this magic quadrant, and a number of players that uh, we're not talking about right now that, you know, uh, I would look at that, that list as kind of who to look out for, but mm. there's, there's no shortage of competition. Um, UiPath has aggressively been hiring. I think they're up to about 2,500 employees, right? Um, which has clearly doubled since uh, probably this time last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm curious as to uh, is there is there a physical sort of manifestation of this in the manufacturing space? Like, I mean, would you compare this to like uh, automated processes that are linked together through software in an assembly line environment? Um, I would think about it as more of a, a fourth industrial revolution. If you look back to the way um, only 2% of Americans are now fed by, uh, or 2% of people are in farming, where did all those jobs go, right? Mm -hmm. They shifted into other industries. So uh, we're going to see definitely a lightning of talent going into uh, maybe more customer service focus, things that people are uniquely good at. Yeah. And I think it's a good thing if the job you have is uh, kind of boring, that we're using technology to free people from that, that mundane repetitive work. Because I know I've had jobs in the past that really uh, aren't so interesting. So if a robot can do that part of it, mm -hmm. then it leaves more joy and uh, opportunities to do other kinds of work. Mm -hmm. So I used to do data entry, but now I have to become a programmer. Is that the kind of? Uh, you could become a programmer. I think um, the type of thing that are still value now, communication skills, how people work on teams. Um, I think people are still going to be very important in the future, and maybe even more so because a bigger precedence is placed on uh, these kind of soft skills. Right. Okay, Mark, that's a great introduction to RPA. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for joining me today. Great, absolutely. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Make sure you never miss a show by subscribing to our YouTube channel and clicking on the little notifications bell. If you're interested in getting monthly actionable investment ideas in the cannabis space to your inbox, subscribe to the newsletter at MidasLetter.com. Yeah, robotic process automation, Ed.
Like, what the fuck? RPA. <laughs> yeah, I know, but what's going to happen? I heard of IPA, that's beer. Yeah, and so you're that means like, if I start saying things redundantly and repetitively, that I can be replaced by some software? Edward, the stocks are going up. Edward, the stocks are going down. Edward, the SNP is going down. Edward, the prime minister is a criminal. Edward, the president is a criminal. So what happens if all labor can be performed by robots? Which you got to believe. Well, that's, that's only when they matter. take over and they take, get rid I of know, us. But, but haven't you watched your movies? Of course, but, I'm, but, but let's say they didn't take over. What do you mean they didn't take over? What kind of robot is going to waste an opportunity to snuff out well, the human race, like when they've got everything figured out for maybe themselves? They need us to, you know, give them some ideas. Plug them in. Well, that's just it. Maybe we shouldn't give them any ideas. The robot's going to give the robot a gun. The robot's going to be like, "What do I do with this?" And you're going to say, "I'm not telling you, robot. You just take care of that gun till I tell you what you do with it." So you know how we were talking about Germany. I'm sorry for jumping around here, but I got to bring this no, that's up. Okay. So 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 listen to this. So they're talking. <laughs> They're talking, Wait, about talking about Germany. They're talking about Germany. They're talking about the, the frail nature. And they yes. said, in, to, in contrary to what a lot of people believe, the infrastructure in Germany is in dire need of a facelift. Like they're talking, facelift. They're saying, for instance, you think you go on the Autobahn and it's this super highway that you could just, there's, there's all kinds of parts of the Autobahn Goats. That, that needs uh, repair. Really? And bridges, and this, and airports, and it, it went on and on and Have on. Have you so ever driven on the, uh, in the internet, interstate highways in New York State? Uh, yes. Yeah. So those, uh, probably riding a camel would be more comfortable than driving a, I know. in a vehicle in a lot of those roads. It's like, so when you say facelift, you don't mean facelift. You mean it needs serious no, they, They're talking about infra infrastructure. A right. facelift, you say it wouldn't be Facelift is, is, is would be extra structure. Yeah. Yeah, you need infrastructure. Pro you got infra Look at some of the bridges. And you, well, you, you I, just look at them. Yeah. Duh. We should go there. Do some infrastructure projects. Well, that's why the German government just announced $50 billion in fiscal stimulus. You know what fiscal stimulus is? Spend it on yeah, infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. Did you, have you seen the size of the highway they've been building between, where is it now? The, the China thing? No, it's up in uh, northern Ontario between Marathon and the Manitoba border. Anyway, Mar Marathon and Dash? Marathon, 26 miles, Dash, 100 yards. <laughs> All righty then. Um, yeah, S&P, how about that? Uh, we're going to be looking at more mining companies lately, uh, in the future, Well, let's, let's take a look at uh, the, the GL, let's look, uh, the KL, which is the big one that Sprott, uh, apparently everybody's saying he's got a billion dollars of profits. Oh, Kirkland Lake Gold. You mean the one that I re recommended in 2012? And did you buy any? Yeah, I did. How many? 5,000. And you still have it? No, I sold it. Did you make money? Mm, no, I didn't. I was poor. I know. I, I was still... poor at the time. What are but... you saying? You need money to make money? Yeah. That's the thing. This is the thing about the stock market. People think, oh, I'm going to put money in the stock market. But the question, the problem, the thing that I've learned the hard way is that yeah, you also have to have the flow to be able to leave your money in the stock market until it's ready for harvesting. If you're putting money in the stock market thinking, okay, I need this to go up in time to pay rent at the end of the month, that's when the market likes to hand you your ass and teach you a lesson. Yeah. It's called a wealth transfer exercise. Yeah, the, uh, there's a bit of a toppy formation on the, on the Kirkland Lake. Uh, it actually... Oh, show us a chart there. Yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. That's a, that's a one-year chart. Let's look at a six-month. There it is. You know, and, and it really... Wow. The really climb. The big move is back in, you know, back in here. It's... it's uh, look at that. That's a two-year chart. That looks like... Look at that. That's a, that's a very, very uh, predictable pattern. No? Yeah. What is it? Going up? Going up. Yeah. I like, um, I like the pink lines, too. Yeah, those are. They kind of match your shirt. Yeah, there you go. They're cool. Uh, yeah, so, okay, we're going into a recession. Stocks are going to tank. Uh, the S&P is going to crap out. Uh, Deutsche Bank is going to find itself unfunded at some point. No, you know what? I bet you that the Germans learned their lesson from Lehman. And they're not. They're going to make sure that 
Deutsche Bank doesn't flounder, probably they're going to consolidate it, recapitalize it. And they're going to, the, I bet you here's what happens. The European Central Bank extends a troubled asset relief program of its own, takes all of the non-performing debt off of the balance You're sheet. You're giving these guys ideas. Well, I do. I'm, maybe I'm in for a cut. 10%. Uh, they're going to take all the toxic debt off the sheet, uh, balance sheet of Deutsche Bank, right. and uh, Deutsche Bank lives to strike sing another day. What do you think? Is that possible? You, you know... Yeah, I, I think if Deutsche Bank fails, it's it's uh, that's big trouble. That's that would be a catalyst for and, another depression. And and they they at you know back in the day, ten years ago, when we had all the problems with derivatives and all this stuff, they said that Deutsche Bank had a a notional amount of three a, a trillion dollars of derivatives out there. Trillion dollars of derivatives. Yeah, like the notional value. Because you, know, you the only ten, the only thing you can do when that happens is go eat some. Fucking fabulous barbecue. You, have you ever been to Bark's Smokehouse in Parkdale? In Parkdale? Parkdale. Parkdale, neighborhood of Toronto oh, I know in the West End. I know Parkdale. You know Parkdale? Actually, somebody got shot and killed there at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, uh, two hours before we showed up there to eat some of the best barbecue ever. At that place? Yeah. And they were open for business? They were open for business. Nothing's going to slow down Are you Bark's sure barbecue. you didn't have any barbecue human ribs? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure they were too small for human ribs, unless they were a baby, in which case they didn't taste like baby, so I'm pretty sure they were pork. Le bébé? Le bébé. Une de trois gazink. Anyways, so okay. yeah, if you are suffering a loss in your portfolio, go eat barbecue and drink smoke and chokes. I guarantee you will be happy by 7 o'clock that evening. 8 o'clock, maybe. 9 o'clock, you'll be even happier, unless you're one of those violent drunks, in which case, take yourself home and overindulge in cannabis. <sighs> wow. I feel better now. So if uh, the EU is going to be the catalyst for the next leg down in the global financial recession that actually started in 2008, and there's no reason to think this is doom and gloom, go buy yourself a farm, get yourself some chickens, buy a big fat gun, ch -ch -ch, Buy gold and silver in ounces and get yourself up there on the porch and order up some barbecue. Just lean back in the rocking chair and it's like, hey, you get What's out of my property, I'll blow your goddamn head off. Ha bam! Speaking of barbecues, what's your favorite kind of barbecue? What's your favorite food for barbecue? Favorite, favorite food? Well, I mean, a steak has always been near and dear a to my heart. A little bacon on there? No, bacon on a steak? Yeah. Who wants to corrupt a perfectly good steak with a piece of bacon? Well, maybe you're corrupting the bacon with a perfectly well, good steak. Well, are you going to throw some steak on some perfectly good ribs? No. No. The ribs are perfect as is. The steak is perfect as it is. You put bacon on a steak. You know why they put bacon, wrap bacon around a filet mignon? Make it, it look filet, bigger. No. Filet has no filet. fat in it. Filet is lean. Therefore, has a low flavor profile. So they put bacon around that filet to give it some flavor. No kidding. I'm not kidding. No shit. Yeah, shit, none. Shit free. No shit. What about, shit. don't you like baby, uh, b uh, b barbecued side ribs? Back ribs, back ribs. Back ribs, side ribs, I don't care. Give me any ribs. Okay. Barbecued, oof. Yeah, are you kidding? I like the uh, dry rub ones anyways. Uh, really? Dry yeah. rub? So, Ed, let's, let's get serious here. Come on, man. It's been like an hour of just talking bullshit here. Let's talk about something serious. <laughs> we are. The end of the cannabis swoon to the downside is got to be coming in September. Why? Because I said so. Okay. Um, no, we know. No, actually, you know what? I think that the cannabis market is going to catch a real bid for in to 2020, leading up to the U.S. presidential election, because all of the candidates are going to. Well, the the only ones who have a chance of winning are the one that say we will legalize cannabis federally if we're elected, and the ones who say we won't do that. They won't even make it through the primaries, is my prediction. No? Nothing to say? I, you know, the political thing, who knows? But anyway, so this is my point. You look at what's going on now. Okay, earnings are dismal. But we're still, these, these are the companies that, like, up until last year, were all ta tanking on value for speculative future performance. So now that the performance has, start, has started and it's yeah. dismal, everybody's like, oh, the speculative premium is now off the table, as well as the performance premium. Now we need to value these on per performance. 
which if we did that to all the companies on the S&P, S&P would be at no 3,000. No. S&P would be at like 2,000 if you're lucky. And take out all of the artificial air that's in there, a la the stock buybacks actually banked out uh, 4.5 trillion, or let's call it 3.5 trillion. So let's say there's 35 trillion more dollars in the system of combined currency credit assets as a result of the quantitative easing that's taken place. How much do you think the ECB has quantitatively eased since uh, 2010? 2.6 trillion euros. No problem. No problem. You, you, you know what? They, they say it. there's no politician that can resist the printing press. Hmm. It's just too easy. Oh, I can, I can sympathize with that. I mean, if I had a printing press, I'd be, that baby would be on full blast all the time. Really? You yeah. wouldn't be like, okay, you know what, turn off that press, I'm gonna go out and get a drink. Uh, I'd bring the press with me. <laughs> I'd, You'd bring I'd the press a, with you to the bar. Yeah. Oh, that hey, that, like that'd fun. be a, 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 what if you sat there and said, hey, throw, start throwing money around. Hey, Josephine, you want a drink? Take out your teeth and grab a seat on the stool next to me and I'll buy you drinks all night long. <laughs> Ed, that's Take out your very, teeth. <laughs> yeah, well. What the hell? You want, it, you want it with her teeth in? What if she loses track of her teeth? When you get home and you're like, honey, you're, what's that in your pants? Yeah, it's yeah, like, ah, yeah. oh, damn Josephine. She yeah, left like her that, teeth on. You're passionate. Yeah. Well, you're passionate. Yeah, or I'm Joe. Passionate. It doesn't have to be no, a Josephine. The, it could be a Joe. Joe, liquor, take your teeth out. The you're going to do that. You're passionate. Yeah, passionate. Okay. So, okay. So here's my question. What companies among all of the licensed producers in the world do you think are most viable for the next cycle to the upside? Which one do you think has the most torque in it, the most performance? Which one is going to do the best well, by its investors? I'll tell you one that, that I've heard of, Nate, we've talked about briefly, but there's one, I don't know much about it, but Ceneva uh, keeps coming up. Ceneva keeps coming up. I yeah. thought it kept going down. No, but isn't it, it's, maybe it's, it's got a good uh, bit, uh, uh, business, no, it doesn't. No? <laughs> Jesus. This is what a guy told me. I'm just telling you. He's full of and shit. I respect him. I respect him. Really? What's the ticker for Ceneva? Let's look at SNN. it. SNN. Saturday Night Numbskulls. I was going to say Saturday Night Numbskulls. <laughs> I was going to say Saturday Night Knive. Yeah. SNN? Anyways, my money is actually, for the best performance compressed torque that's in a share price, my money is on... Uh, well, of the companies that are publicly trading now, my money's on uh, Organogram. Look at this, Sedeva, buck 19. Holy smokes. Yeah, look at that. After, just after raising five million bucks, they tank. You, you, know, you know what, can I make a suggestion here? Sure. Is like, that the Sedeva chart? Yeah, 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 now look. And this is where you got to be careful, folks, because I always talk about buying something wait, out wait, of- Wait, 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 put that chart back put up. This, yeah, come on, where do you got? Get the chart back up. We're about up. to talk about the chart. Picture in picture, Ed in the chart. Come on, what's the matter with you guys? What are you, rusty in there? Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so look. Okay. No, no, no. Now what? There. See, see this? That's outside the band. That's outside the band. This is outside the band. Now we're back inside the band, but sometimes these oversold uh, situations don't result in a move up, they remove in a sideways move. So you can still move sideways and work off the oversold. Hmm. And that's what I'm afraid, you know, I, I, I traded Tilroy today twice, once not so good, lost money, second time I made a little bit of money, hmm. I'm flat, I'm staying away because this, this sector looks like it's toxic. Toxic? You know, like we're back to almost at, at the yearly lows for weed and Tilray. Yeah. Which Two. makes that the entry point gift of a lifetime? Maybe. But okay, so Aurora's going to come out. Cam stands by his uh, statement that they're going to do $100 million in revenue. Doesn't talk about EBITDA. They've said right? this before. Yeah. Yeah, EBITDA is probably... Um, so, but, okay, so $100 million run rate. Uh, Excuse me? I said... Uh, the... Uh, <laughs> Charlotte's Web, a uh, little bit of flatulence in the room here. Uh, Charlotte's warm Web. Warm air, hot air. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Charlotte's Web you know what? There's is a on a rate run you know rate for $100 million at the end of the year. I outed you there, didn't I? What? <laughs> what do you mean you outed me? I outed me. 
No, oh, yes. Ah, I blasted one right oh, in your general Jesus, direction. Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Hey, can we get some some uh, fans in here, please? <laughs> fans of what? But fans. not fa not fans <laughs> of us. Just the, the football other football fans. <laughs> Holy jump! Okay, so I got to tell you, there's some new companies coming to trade. There sure are. Um, one of them is called Green Relief. They make the best uh, CBD oil on the planet. I do have like some serious money sunk into this sucker, and uh, so it is going to. Uh, is that going to start trading? One day. I hope. <laughs> Better. <laughs> How else am I going to get the hell out of that motherfucker? What do you think? I'm going to own it forever? Of course it's going to start trading. Actually, I might own it forever. I wouldn't mind owning it forever. You know, if you own the stocks of everything you use in your house every day, you're probably going to be rich. I tell you about electric tractor this weekend? <laughs> you did Don't, not. I did. Well, I didn't buy it. I put in my order because you have to uh, get in line. It's a long list. It's an electric tractor. 30 horsepower, 55K. A little expensive, but it's a workhorse. They ran a test against a 100 horsepower diesel tractor. This thing put out the same torque, more so even, and lasted just as long as the other one did. Really? Jason Garza says, no farting on live, James. Says who, Jason? I guess it's our show. We get to do what we want. Borborygmus, I hear. Yeah, and we're not, it's not like we're those mainstream media no, no, guys who no, never no. fart. No. We fart all the time. You know, we enjoy it, farting. You know, I, I was uh, asked to take over the BNN. Uh, uh, Butt News Network? <laughs> the, the anchor position. You're but the I, anchor. but I said, they said, but you, you know, you can't pass gas on air. I said, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> You're out, exactly. That means what? No muffins in the morning? No, no, stay away from the beans. Stay away from the beans. Beans, beans, I, I good for your nice heart. The bean, more you eat, bean. the more you... Hey, you know what time it is? It's time to go. Three. No, 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 no. It's time for a cocktail. Jesus. It is? No, yeah. no, no drinking today. Let's go to Barks. No. Nope. Let's go to Barks. We'll get nope. some barbecue mm -hmm. and some bourbon. Barbecue, bourbon. So what? what bourbon was... and barbecue. Yeah. You know, Vic Nofeld knows a thing or two about Bart's Barbecue. Not that I've seen him there, but I just have a funny feeling he does. Um, but anyways, yes, we're going to have a party at Bart's Barbecue one day. It's not really big enough for one of our parties, but, uh, you know, what do you think? I think we should, uh, how many people uh, can sit in this establishment? How many? Well, they got a patio that looks like it holds about 20, and the indoors, I'd say, probably holds 60, so 80. Yeah, I guess that's big enough for us. Um, what's your favorite mining company, Ed, going into this next gold and silver bull market? Well, you know, they're, they're probably all going to go to a degree, but certainly the, 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 the small producers right now, I think, have to be looked at because I, I, I think, what, what's, uh, getting back to Galani, they, what do they produce this year? 40,000 ounces? 30,000. 30,000. So $200 an ounce extra cash. Call it 150. Yeah, that's an extra four and a half, five million dollars that yeah. they're going to have extra money. Yeah, extra. Yes, Galani Gold is a client, and I own the stock, so we must disclose that. Yeah, I don't own it, so I feel a little more comfortable talking about it. Yeah, but you're, you're still there, oh, client. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, good point. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> right. See, we're not that smart. Well, exactly. It's a miracle we've got any money at all. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's a miracle Jeez. I do. Yeah. Anyway. No doubt. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, this week, tomorrow, Jackson Hole. Look for the uh, speech from Jerome Baker at the end of the week. That is essentially all but guaranteed to come across with a uh, rate cut in yeah. the uh, Fed fund rate. And so what's that going to mean for gold? Gold's going to go higher. Gold's going to keep going higher. Silver's going to follow suit. But And also, here's the, here's the conundrum. You can't buy gold and silver at the quoted prices for gold and silver well, because there is no gold and silver available at those prices. Those prices are artificial. They're designed to make you think, oh, I can't buy gold and silver because the government doesn't want you to put U.S. dollars into gold and silver because that brings the value of U.S. dollars. <gasps> Wait, does Donald Trump realize that that's what could happen? That the U.S. dollar, if it goes, no. if everybody buys gold and silver, then the U.S. dollar will go down? 
I don't or will know. it go up? I don't know. Oh, God, Ed. Yeah. When will we know? Y Anyways, you know, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the lower right. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter because we're going to start putting out a newsletter that actually comes up with some pretty smart ideas every once in a while. And we'll try not to lose too much money. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Bye.